trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust.
Jesus in the new day. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus with the sun. Oh, holy, 
clap our hands and let's magnify the Lord as we in, we were finishing with thank you Lord and we can never thank him enough amen never thank him enough the scripture tells us and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus now you need to put your name on it concerning you all of us none is exempt from that no one gets a slide no one gets a, a, a pass it's for all of us and we praise God this morning well we thank the Lord on this wonderful day as we are um, celebrating with our women's service on this fifth Sunday. Let's praise God for that. Amen. And our theme today is the benefits of God. And so we praise the Lord. And while I'm standing here, we just want to honor the house. Of course, we give God our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We give him a wonderful praise. Let's just thank God for who he is this morning. And a wonderful, wonderful Savior, his son, Jesus Christ. Oh, and we just praise the Lord this morning. And we also give honor to our pastor, Bishop Charles Nowden. We honor him this morning. Thanking you for the opportunity of we're, uh, the ladies being able to go forth this morning. And to our supervisor designee, Mother Rosemary Clark, let's give it up for her. Amen. And we have our church mother, Mother, uh, mother uh, Rucker. Let's give her a wonderful hand. We praise God. We have our visitors this morning. and all the way from the great state, I should say country, of Texas. We have Mother Addie Clark. Let's give her a wonderful great weekend. So happy to have her with us and family and just all of you this morning, this morning. And uh, we just thank the Lord. So glad you all have just stopped by to be with us on this wonderful day. And um, we are going to start this morning with our prayer, and it's going to be by Sister Terry Tisdale with our Old Testament reading by Sister Juan Randolph and our New Testament reading from Sister Cloud. We're asking that you all will come in that order, and let's say praise the Lord. We're standing as we're going to go into our prayer. as we know how. God asking you, you to forgive us of all sin. Amen. Anything we may have thought wrong, we may have slighted somebody, we have, may have spoke wrong, we may have walked wrong, we ask you to forgive us. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. God bless this service on this morning. Anoint, bless, deliver, set free, heal, restore, reclaim. In the name of Jesus, let the Holy Ghost saturate this building this morning. In Jesus' name. God, we thank you for those that have traveled far and near. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for eyes to see and ears to hear. We thank you for legs to walk and hands to feel. We thank you for a nose to smell and a tongue to talk. We thank you for a tongue to praise you, oh God. We thank you. 
We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Millions didn't make it, but we were one of the ones who did. Millions didn't make it, but we were one of the ones who did. God, we thank you. We praise you. We praise you. We magnify you. We glorify your name. We thank you for what you're going to do in this service on this morning. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, bless Bishop continually. Bishop, our prelate, bless him continually. Bless Mother Nalden, oh, God. Mother Clark, oh, God. Mother Rucker. Mother Billionaire Absence. Oh, God, Mother Addie Clark, oh, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Wonderful Savior. Bless the name of Jesus. 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 Bless your name, oh God. Let your blood cover. Let your blood cover. We cry the blood of Jesus. We cry the blood of Jesus. We cry the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead your blood. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity, God, to pray to you and pray for the saints and your people everywhere. Bless in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Amen. I will be reading from the Old Testament, Psalms 103, 1 through 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forgive not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth, with good things so that thy youth is renewed like eagles. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Praise the Lord. I'll be reading from St. Matthews 5, 2 through 11. And he opened his mouth and taught, and, and taught, him, taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do, do hunger and thirst of right after righteousness, for there sh they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall reveal, rabble against you, and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against falsely for my name's sake. Forgive me, I got a little bit sick, but praise the Lord for letting me be here to say this word, to read it, and may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearer and the doers of the word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Before we have our greetings, we want to um, just, uh, we've already recognized 
uh, Mother Clark, but we also, uh, we have Elder and Sister Richardson. Let's give them a wonderful <laughs> hand. Richardson. Yes, we also have a Sister Gully in the back here. So glad that she came. We have Minister Guillory over here. Yes, we have our brother over here and Kevin. So glad to have you, Brother Kevin, with us today. Amen. And we're just, it's just wonderful that, like I say, you stopped to say, I want to be there at Holy Way. And Bishop McKinney always taught us to just tell your guests you didn't have to come, but thank you. And so let's give them another hand. And on that note, we do have an official greeting, and that's coming from Sister Melanie Nelson. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Aren't we happy to be here today? Let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm here for the welcome. Salutations to all of you here in the sanctuary, as well as social media land, such as Meta, as known as Facebook, and all the viewers. Please stay in viewing. Stay with us. God wants to convey a new re revelation for your life. Amen. Our address is 1722 East Firestone, or Firestone and Beach is the corner store of this. And we are located in Los Angeles. Amen. We are the Holy Way Church of God in Christ. Amen. And our women's service today has a theme called The Benefit of God. In 116th Division of Psalms, verse 12 says, What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? Amen. Now, God's benefits, promises, rewards, and strengthens us for the battle we face. We welcome you and God bless you. Jesus loves you and so do we. Amen. benefits of God and those of you that understand about benefits we know it's all good liabilities that's another thing it's just the opposite but we're talking about the benefits of God today and we do have different speakers as it was already read from the 103rd Psalms as it was sharing uh, sister uh, Juwan was saying about the benefits of God. She was reading how he forgives our sins, how the Lord heals our diseases. God redeems our life from destruction. He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercy, and he satisfies our mouth with good things. And so um, I'm just kind of doing a little alternate here. Uh, for in behalf of Sister Moore and Sister Liz. But um, as Sister Kendra, she would be speaking on how God forgives all of our sins. And it's very interesting um, how those benefits starts out with us asking for forgiveness. You see, God cannot work, really work through us, and we have not ask for forgiveness. And so we, we want now, you've got these other benefits coming, but they really don't work unless we can say, Lord, I'm sorry, Amen. forgive me, yes. forgive me. It has a way of limiting us. 
And even with Moses, as good as he was doing, he was just about ready to really bring the hammer down on Pharaoh. But God said, I ought to kill you where you're standing because he did not do what God had told him in the way of circumcising. But that's another story with his son. But here we are. He got it right. And when he got it right, God let him go on. He forgave him, and he let him go on and do what his job was. And so we have to understand, God has set it up that we need to ask for forgiveness. Amen. Pride will tell you, what are you asking him to forgive you for? But we have to understand that there is a thing called sin. And when we are sinning, we need to ask the Lord to forgive us. And over there, I believe it's over in 1 John 1 and 9, says if we, if we ask God to forgive us, he is more than willing to what? To forgive us. Now, what I love about that scripture, it also has a benefit on it, meaning he's also able to change the behavior. We don't want to be repeat offenders. Is that right? No. But we want to understand that he says, and I will also, and I'm just paraphrasing, he said, I will also change the behavior. It's one thing of going through the same thing, the same thing, but people can get, that, that can get very tiresome. People get sick and tired of being sick and tired, and God says, I understand that. So he says, I will forgive you, and I will change and clean up that behavior. And this is the type of God that we serve. Well, the next one is the Lord heals our diseases. And we need to be healed. All of us need to be healed at some time, meaning there will be those times when the doctor has done all that he can do or she can do. Patients have been told it will have to heal on its own. Yeah, it will have to be healed on its own. And so when it's said like that, they're also telling you if there's no change, then you would have to live with no change and you would have to live with the condition you're in. But these are times that we have to call on Jesus as we read it in that 103rd Psalm, B says, who heals all our diseases. There is nothing, I say again, there is nothing that he can't heal. But it's according to our faith, the power that is working in us. I say to you, what's working in you? As I talk to people, to, that want to be healed. And we just had a session where we prayed with a young man. The Lord said, talk to him about faith. He got to get it in his mind right. God wants our minds to be right, to understand that we have to have faith. Now, Jesus healed many people of their afflictions when he was here on earth doing his ministry. Well, we know about blind Bartimaeus, the man with the withered hand. And he was able to open up deaf ears. I can go on and on with uh, all the, the healings that came forth through Jesus. But I want to say this. Don't look at the extreme of the condition that is before us that needs to be healed. But I say look to the healer that can cure the extreme. It doesn't matter how extreme it is and what the doctor is saying. You got to trust God. You got some conditions don't even have a name on it. And when it don't have a name, some doctors don't know what to do, but we know the great physician. He said, yeah, there's no name on it. But I know what to do about no name. I know how to cure it. So with God making healing available to us, it's an indication. Yes, it is. With him making that available for us, that that being a benefit, it's an indication that he loves us. 
Only the devil will put his foot on your neck and you're saying, I'm sick. He don't care. That's what he does. He'll put his foot on you. And I say, that's why I don't like him. He ain't my friend. But we need to know that Jesus can. We need to believe he can. We need to know he will. As in Isaiah 53 and 5, it says, with his stripes. I like to quote that many times when I'm praying for people. With his stripes. This came to fruition when he was on his way to the cross. If they never whipped him, we would not have that benefit. And it's there for your usage. You need to tell the devil that. I like to tell him that. I said, the stripes is there for my benefit. And the Lord says, use it. Use it. Claim it. So his greatest act of healing, however, came through his death, his resurrection, as and foretold by the prophet. It is by Jesus' wounds that we are healed of our worst affliction, which is sin sick, our separation from God as a result of our sins. Though Jesus doesn't heal our, even though Jesus may not even heal us of our health challenges because that comes. We know with Paul, he told him, he said, my grace is sufficient. Paul never complained again about that thorn in the flesh. He lived with it, never came up. If it did, I'm sure he was by himself and said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. So there will be these type of uh, situations. Only God knows about that. But let's understand this in my conclusion. There is a cure to our deepest need that we can trust, which is the healing he brings to us in our relationship with him. And so let's get it. Not only will he forgive us, of our iniquities and things. Don't nobody know but you and the devil and God seeing you. He can heal you. He can deliver you from that, forgive you, and he heals all our diseases. Amen. Amen. Let's praise the Lord. Well, we're going to also now have Sister Brandy. She's going to come with her topic, God redeems our life from destruction. We will have a selection then from Sister Terry and I will be coming back. Let's give her a hand. Pray for her. Good morning everyone. Thank you. Addressing the house to Bishop and First Lady, Mother Rosemary Clark. We just thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this opportunity and I thank God for this opportunity so bear with me and pray with me um, my related scripture I'm going to go to is Romans the third chapter I'm going to jump down to the 23rd verse and 24th it says for all have sinned come short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus so this is what I came up with, and God blessed me with this. God redeemed us by delivering us from captivity or being bondage in our sin. Taking for an example, just take your having your credit. Everybody wants good credit. Everybody wants good credit. They, they want that 720 or that 800 credit. But God took me this way. We get that credit card, we abuse it, run it up, and we're trying to figure out how are we going to repair that? How are, we going to, how are we going to get this fixed? How are we going to come up with solutions? So we try and figure out, solidate, either make payment arrangements, or some people go out bankruptcy. All right. But God, but when we turn to God, God can take all of that and erase and put it in a spiritual form. God knows how to repair us. 
God knows we, when we ratchet down to the ground, just dirty, don't know where to look, and people look at us like there's no hope for you. But God look at us and say, hey, that is a soul that can be repaired. Amen. No matter what we go through, God can repair us. Like, um, I want to take a definition. God redeems us just like paying or replacing a value of God. God erases all our debts from our sins away. We are, we are delivered from our destruction ways. Define, the definition of destruction is an action proceeding of causing so much damage to something that is no longer existing or cannot be repaired. But God knows how to repair us. We, we have to know that God is the man that can repair anything and everything. When it is too much damage, God knows how, how to mend the broken pieces together like a brand new, like it's brand new. We know we have to, we know we have a, a friend like Jesus that can repair anything, no matter how damaged it is and destruction ways. God redeemeth us from our destruction ways. When people look at us and write us off, but God sees something in us when we feel down and think nobody cares or loves us or doesn't understand, understands our circumstances or what we are going, what's going on. Just know that God paid it all for us. That a that that's a mindful God and a God that loves us unconditionally. So in my closing, God will never write us off. Put your trust in God and have faith in God. Thank you. Satisfied and joy supplies life, life would be worthless without He. Satisfies and joy he supplies. Life would be worthless without him. Oh.
Jesus. Never fail, Jesus. Never fail, heaven, heaven and earth. They all shall pass away, but, but Jesus, but Jesus, oh, but Jesus, but Jesus, 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 Jesus. Never, he won't, he won't fail. There's a saying that there's enjoyment in slow rain. And slow rain, as you hear it tapping, and it just soothes you. And that, those songs she was just singing was soothing to the soul. Let's praise God for the, her. Amen. Jesus never fails. Yes. And we thank God. Let's give Sister Brandy a hand. God redeems our life from destruction. She stepped out a minute, but we just praise God. Just This has been good, good, good. Well, we're moving forward, and we have Sister Joycey Lee. She's coming with, he crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. And after she will come, we're going to have um, Mother Rosemary Clark. She is our president of the Women Moving Ministries. And yes, we praise God for her leadership and she's going to finalize this today with reminding us he satisfies us to speak good things. And so we praise God as y'all will come in that order. Let's say amen for this. precious Holy Ghost, a wretch like me, he sits up high and he looks down low. I got five minutes, y'all, so I'm going to go fast. All right, all right. The Lord crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Psalm 103, verse 4. Sister Melody read the scripture about what shall we render unto the Lord. And that scripture starts off with bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Our praises unto God ushers him into the atmosphere. Amen. And David, I love David because he was so transparent with God. Mother Nauda talked about repentance. He had a repentant heart. God has to, can't deal with us until we have a repented heart. And, he, and God told me, he said, this is a heart thing. Praise is essential. It's like taking a bath. If we don't clean ourselves up, there's going to be a smell. All right. If we're not praising God and honoring him and worshiping him, he can't smell the sweet fragrance of our praise. He can't usher in to our environment. 
Amen. Amen. And we get benefits when we praise God, when we worship God. He crowns us with his love and kindness and tender mercy. What does that look like? Love and kindness, what does it look like? It's a character. It's an act of putting others first. It's a relationship between me and God, you and God. It's a sacrificial, sacrificial act. Kindness is compassion, and it shows through action. It's a gentle spirit. It has a gesture. David, he experienced these with his God when he was praising God, and he started benefiting these gifts from the Lord. He wasn't self-seeking. He had no motives. He just worshiped and praised God for who he was. Amen. He glorified in him. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. He showed passion. God loves us unconditionally. And we have to love God unconditionally, no matter what the circumstances is. You know, when God, when David was going through things, he praised God. When things were good, he praised God. No matter what, no matter what, we have to praise God. And we reap, and that's when we reap the benefits. Amen. When we praise him, we, we show an outward communication. The fruits of our lips. We use the fruits of our lips to worship and praise him and give him glory and honor. And that draws him in. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. That's what we render to God. We render praise and worship. And he just starts coming down. Amen. Amen. We rejoice. Amen. Even though things may not go the way we want or God, things may not look the way we think they should would, we got to praise God if we want the benefits. Amen, amen. Tender mercies. Well, what does tender mercies look like? Tender mercies is being compassionate. Have a tender heart. When somebody hurts, we hurt with them. Amen. We're able to feel compassion for others. We're sensitive. I'm a sensitive person. When people cry, it makes me cry. I feel, I don't know what's going on, but I, I just feel that, that, that connection. My spirit just connects. When people are happy, amen, we can be sensitive to that. We can be happy with them, amen? Praise God. Compassion is being open to love and kindness being easily moved to pity and forgiveness. God's mercy comes from a deepest place within him, which is true and sincere. The crown that he covers us with is made with pure gold. God is pure, and he wants a pure heart. That's why we have to repent. We have to repent from our heart. And like Mother, Mother Nala to say, and when we repent, we have to change. We can't keep doing that. Amen? The benefits are unfailing love, loyal love, compassionate, protection, unselfishness, forgiveness, and washing. And his, his, the benefits is the washing of our soul with his blood, healing our emotions and our spirit. It's an investment. When we invest in praising and worshiping God, he dwells in our praises, and then we reap the benefits. When I don't know if all of you really kind of know about investments, but when you start to look at investments, it's your finances, and you look for uh, you look for um, investment accounts, high yield accounts, where you want to put your money in. And when you put your money into that account, 
you earn interest. So you want to look at that percentage to see how much money your money going to make. Right. Amen. Because your money is going to grow. And they have term accounts where if you keep it in for so many months, your money grows. You, get, you can't touch it. You can't take it out. You got to leave it there. Well, well, God, praising God, one of the benefits is when he covers us, we praise him. We get the blessings. All these blessings that we've talked about, the forget everything that Brandy shared with us, everything that Mother knows, those are our benefits. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so we want to invest in the Lord. We want to express our love out of the, out of our heart. We want to we want to um, worship Him and praise Him so that He can come in and bless us and we can reap the benefits. Amen. All right, that's my talk for today. God bless you. Lord, prepare me to be a living sanctuary, a sanctuary. Tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. Oh Lord, for me, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Without him, I would be nothing. And without him, I would fail. Oh, and without him, my life, my life would be drifted like a ship without a sail. Give the Lord a hand praise. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise. Just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For all your benefits. Just the one thing. I say, thank you, God, for thinking about little old me and rewarding me with loving kindness. And your tender mercy. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. I love David because David was a praiser. And I, I have praise down on the inside. I don't care what you come to do. I come to praise the Lord. I come to give God some glory. I know what he's done for me. And I refuse to leave the church the same way I came. I come looking for something. Hallelujah. And when you're looking for something, you'll find it. Hallelujah. Praise God. I, I know the house has been addressed, but I just thank God for seeing my bishop sitting over there. I, I thank God for being able to see my first lady sitting here. I thank God to, that they are here with us on this morning. Amen. It's just a blessing to have our leaders with you. And to Mother Clark, God bless you. You look good. You look good, sweetheart. She's still on there trying to get it on. If I say call his name, you probably jump up and start. Hey! <laughs> My God, she still got that spunk. I tell you, God is a keeper. He will keep those that desire to be kept. Hallelujah. And I know this woman is a prayer warrior, and that's the reason why she's getting around the way she is. But God ain't through with me yet. God ain't through with me yet. I don't care what the devil try to do. God ain't through with me yet. Oh, well, praise God. I'm going to hurry up and do my part and sit down. He satisfies us 
to speak good things. And I was looking at that whole passage of scripture. Let's turn to Psalm 103. Hallelujah. Can you all read those first five verses with me? And if we would stand for the reading of the word. Hallelujah. Are we ready? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with love and kindness and tender mercies. The fifth verse says, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. That's our, that's our topic. That's our theme scripture. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I look at those first five verses, and God is doing a whole lot for us. In just that passage of scripture, God is doing a whole lot. Hallelujah. See, but, but he, he starts off with bless the Lord. Amen. You know, sometimes we don't, we start talking to God and say, Lord, I want, I need, ain't blessed, and ain't asking, and ain't thanked him for nothing that he's already done. Lord, you know I need a car. Lord, you know I need a house. Lord, you know I need some money. But say, Lord, I thank you for what you've already done. I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for what you're going to do. Let's learn to bless the Lord before we ask the Lord. Hallelujah. Then he says he don't want to forget his benefits. And sometimes we, we, we do. We get so caught up. We forget what God is already doing. Don't you know he's blessing us right now? Are you breathing? God is blessing you with your own breath. You don't have no oxygen tank next to you. You ain't coming in here with one leg. You are blessed to walk in here. On your own strength. Thank the Lord for the benefits. Hallelujah. And then David goes on to say, who, who, who forgiveth all thy iniquity. First he realizes himself. I need to come before God and confess that I have sinned and you can forgive me. When, when you admit what you've already done, say, Lord, you know what? I was wrong. Because he already know you're wrong. He already know what you did. When you can come to him and say, for Lord, forgive me for what I've done, God will do 105, 103, and, and, and 4. He, had to, he, he says, he, he, wait a minute, hold on, I lost my little scripture. He says, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with love and kindness and tender mercy. But before he goes to talk about what he's done, he talks about all of thine iniquities that he's forgiven him for. Yeah. David was a, a, a man after God's own heart, but he did some things. David was serious. David did what he did, but when, some, when they told him that he was wrong and it was him, he went to the Lord and he asked God, please forgive me. That's all we got to do. Ask God to forgive us, but then don't make it a, 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 a continual thing that you're doing. When you ask God to forgive you of one thing, don't go back and do it no more. Don't think God's going to keep on giving you for doing the same thing over and over again. You can't keep willfully sinning. You got to realize that God will forgive you because he knows that you need a chance and you don't know better. And maybe he, you, you just need a little slap. But when you start doing it over and over again, that's another, that's another story. Hallelujah. So I thank God for forgiving me. You don't know what you have done during the course of the day that you might have sinned or could have sinned. So as far as best to say, Lord, forgive me. Even before we go to bed, ask the Lord for forgiveness and pray to him to keep us in the name of Jesus. Then he says, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. I can't tell you how many times on the freeway, yeah. just the freeway, the 17, yeah. how close people have come to hitting me and God sustained me. God held them back. I was on, I was on the freeway one, 17 one, one afternoon coming home. And this woman, she, she swerved so. She, I know she kissed my car. I know she did. I know she hit me. That woman came so close to me. Uh, when I got, out, got home, I had to look at the, the side of my car. But do you know she did not touch me? Oh, my God. And when you had gone that speed, 
that's that's a that's a bad situation. It, it's just it's just really dangerous, and these people are driving like that everywhere. But God's take all day long. He has kept us all day long. He keeps us. Hallelujah! And then He said, He says, he, he, with 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 the after He did the the redeeming, He crowneth us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Do you know what that means? I know I know Sister George brought that out. But if it wasn't for God's love and his kindness, where would we be? Without his mercy, where would we be? Hallelujah. We, you know, God don't have to do anything. He told Jeremiah, he was the potter and we're the clay. And if he wants to, he can break you down. He can break you down because he, he, that's his job. That's who he is. He's God over everything. Hallelujah. I believe uh, Superintendent Walker's preached on Friday night. You don't have to worry about uh, who's in control because you know God is uh, in control of everything. But, but you have control to do the things that you do, whether they're good or bad. You know which ones to do. So God is a, a God, of, he's a gentleman, and he's not going to just step ahead and make you do things. It's up to you. If you want to live saved, live saved. He's not going to twist your arm to be saved. He said, I stand at the door and knock. But if you look at that door, there's no door handle on that side of that door. God ain't going to open that door. You have to let him know, I want you in my life. Hallelujah. And with love and kindness, he knows how to bring you in. So then we go to who satisfies my verse, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. After doing all of that, God yet satisfies us. There are so many things God has done for us. And I've been getting to think about satisfy. Satisfy means to fulfill or to meet the want that's needed, requirement or expectation. Then we have satisfied. Pleased or content with what has been experienced or received. But God comes with who satisfies. Satisfied, he doesn't stop. It's a continual thing. He continues to, to, to satisfy us with good things. With, with the more we praise him, the better we feel. Hallelujah. The more we pray, the closer we get to him. I tell you, if you could ever just get there. And that's why the enemy fights us so much about reading the word. Because he knows if you ever got him down on the inside, nothing. Nothing could bother you. You wouldn't get all upset about things. Silly willy because somebody looked at you funny. You won't, it wouldn't even fade. You know they're looking, it just it wouldn't bother you no more. But that's because you have been praying and seeking God. And you get down on the inside, there's a satisfaction that comes when you know that you're praising God. It makes a difference in your walk with him when you begin to really seek him and allow him to have his way in your life. You're bought with a price. Hallelujah. You're not your own. You might think you're grown, but you're not. God yet owns you. He just lets you think you're doing something, but you ain't grown, Sister Wichester. Hallelujah. 79, but I ain't grown. Not when it comes to my father. I don't care what nobody say. And if he wants you, he going to get you. Oh, yes, he, he have a way of getting you. Hallelujah. When he's got a call on your life, he's going to get you. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Ask me, I'll tell you. Hallelujah. So David gets down to business when he says, what about this man? He just has crowned us with wisdom. He has given us all these things just in Psalm 103. If you was to read all of the benefits and promises of God, you'd be surprised that you are, you're so blessed anyway. You don't even realize the things that you want. You don't even need them when you get yourself in, into God's will. When you begin to really put God first, there's a whole lot of things we don't need uh, that we think we want. Amen? So with that satisfaction, there comes that peace of mind, the joy. The, the, the praise and what makes you want to praise God even the more. I look and I see sometimes the pastors, the, the elders will say, let's give the Lord a hand praise. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Not me. Give the Lord a hand praise. And some folk will not lift their hand, clap their hand, or give God the praise. And that's why I thank God. This is the individual thing. 
Now, if I was to say, let's give God a hand praise. Hallelujah. We know what we got. We're not doing it for man. We're doing it because of, you don't know like I know. What he's done for me, I got a right to praise him. Hallelujah. So we're coming with that praise. The more you praise him, the less negative the thoughts should be. Those, th those, those thoughts that the enemy want to bring, you can't do this. It's too hard. You can't make this. You, can't, you know you can't stay saved. He'll tell you that. You ain't saved. But you say, devil, it's a lie. He said, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Hallelujah. That praise, if you, if you praise him, you can't complain and praise at the same time. You just can't do it. I don't care what you try to say. Try to complain and praise God at the same time. I'm going to put you in the, in the nut house. I'm going to put you in the nut house. In the name of Jesus. It's a shame that we don't realize that the more we praise him, the more the enemy has to go back. He, he, he can't stay among the praise of the saints. The praises of the saints, is, is, that's what makes him move, it makes him flee. Even in the olden days, they didn't have the spirit, they didn't have the Holy Ghost, but the, the spirit of God moved around them, moved around them in the midst of them. And when they was going out to battle, they sent the praises out. Hallelujah. I praise you in the morning. I praise you in the noonday. I'm going to praise you till the sun comes down. And they will come in, and once they go to their camp, they will, they will confuse the enemy. The enemy didn't know what to do with all that noise. He didn't know what to do with all that noise. Confuse it with your praise. Confuse it with your hallelujah. Confuse the devil in your life. He's got to go. Hallelujah. For God I live and for God I die. And devil, you can't help me. You will not. Hallelujah. This is my mind and my mind belongs to God. My hands and my feet belong to God. Everything that I am is God. Hey. Hallelujah. I'm nothing without him. Without him I would fail. Oh, bless his name. And we're, all we got to do is just let him know I'm going to praise him anyhow. Work up a praise. Sometimes you can get so low that you don't know where the praise is going to come from. But just keep saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. After a while, it's going to get louder. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I was feeling kind of bad after a little while ago. But look at me now. Yay! I feel good, good, good. Good down in my soul. Every time I think about Jesus, I feel good. Don't you feel good this morning? Because I'm going to praise him anyhow. Don't wait for nobody to help, help you praise God. You praise him anyway. You go to some church and they don't even, they praise the Lord so long. That when you start praising him, they look at you funny. Well, let them look. Because you know what? You don't know like I know what he's done for me. Hey, you can't tell it. Let me tell it. What he done for me. Hallelujah. Tell your testimony. But thank God for what he delivered you out of. Don't have no pity party. Because you ain't going to get no gifts. You don't get gifts at a pity party. Amen. Learn to praise God through the thick and the thin. God gave that. He said he satisfied us with good things. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are, are good. Whatsoever things are of a good report. Think on these things. Turn off the tape. Turn the devil's tape off. Don't let him do this to you. Don't let him talk to you. He ain't going to do nothing but suggest that you do something. If I was you, I would. But he know he can't do it. So he want to get you to do it. So you'll miss out. But honey, walk, walk with a praise in your heart. You don't have to get loud on the street, but it's down on the ba 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 He's... Hallelujah. It's just down on the inside. And when it's down on the inside, I think about Psalm 91. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a place that you can get in God where nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. No matter what you're doing, nothing else matters. Because I know he that dwelleth in a secret place of the most high shall abide. Can you see his wings just stretch over you? How did his spiritual wings just cover you? He makes you know that you're my child. I died for you. I took those stripes for you. And now you're healed. Sometimes it's not a physical condition. It's a mental thing. 
The devil try to get your mind, he got you. Don't let him touch your mind. Keep your mind. Hallelujah. Guard your heart. Guard your anointing. Because God satisfies us with good things. God bless you. In here. Give the Lord a hand, praise. And come on, give God some praise. Come on, give God some praise, everybody. Let's stand on our feet and just give God some praise. If God been good to you, if the Lord been good to you, give him some praise. Thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. And I look back over my life and think about his goodness. Hallelujah. I can give God praise, amen, for what he already done. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of the Lord has been rich and we've been blessed. I've been blessed. The Lord laid on my heart to do something. I'm not wasn't going to say anything today, but as I'm sitting there, and I need to do something this morning. We certainly thank God for all of the speakers, but they just the anointing of the Lord, Amen, is what we rely on. I need I need to do something here right now that the Lord laid on my heart. I want Patrick to come up. Patrick, right there. Patrick, he don't. Come on up here close by. He don't be here every Sunday, but every once in a while he pops in. I think about four or five times he's been coming. Come on up a little close right here. And my brother Kevin right here. My friend of my son here. Right there. Yeah, just sit right there on one of them seats right there here. And uh and uh Samuel. These 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 Samuel came to us in January the 1st. And he's there every Sunday, every Sunday. And they go out of town, they let me know where he's going. Sometimes go back east. But the Lord, they don't mean to just to have these young men here that are today, that I want to pray a special prayer. We want to pray for you. And when, when Kevin came in, I just felt the anointing of the Lord. I went over and shook his hand and greeted him. And the Lord told me, he said, there is no accident. That's, what, that's the word he said. He said, there's no accident that Samuel is here. There's no accident that Patrick's here. And there's no accident that Kevin is here. Now, I don't care who invited you or how you came, but there's no accident. I believe it was the God divine will that you be here today. Amen. I believe it's the God. I believe that it, it not even that what you think about it. God has a way of dealing with things that we don't even understand and put us here. God has a blessing many times for us 
but we have to put ourselves in the right place and be at the place. If I tell you that it's going to be raining at Manchester and, and Alameda, you can sit here all day and won't get wet. But if you move down there with Manchester and Alameda, you're going to get wet. Am I right? You have to be what God can use and do for you. I want you to know we want to do that. And that's what I want the women to, to do today. I want y'all to get your prayer shoes on. Somebody said prayer buckets or whatever. I want to pray for these. And not only just these that God laid on my heart to name these three men here, but I want to pray for everybody. You know what I mean? Not just, just the, those, but I believe there's something that you're seeking that you want God to do for you. I believe there's something that Kevin want God to do for him. Amen. He's in a wheelchair now. He, you can make all kinds of excuses say, I can't come. The man didn't get in the pool because he said for 30 years he didn't get in the pool because he said I didn't have nobody push to put me in. Y'all know that story? But he could have said, hey, he could have said my wheelchair is on flat. He could have said I don't have nobody to push me. If there's all kind of excuses. He, you got a whole lot of them. You could have said, hey, uh, I can't walk right now. I said, right now. But you're going to walk. Amen. They're just right now. But you're going to walk, all right? So we believe God. How many believe God with me today? I'm not in the, I'm not in the best of, uh, that, that I can be, but... Uh, in spite of nine operations, I've been, the doctor done cut on me nine times in my life. Nine times. And uh, out of those times, uh, just about a month ago, the Lord did it again. I didn't have surgery, but uh, I had uh, got up and I was going to the bathroom and uh, I failed. I don't even remember myself falling. But my wife heard the noise and she came back had, she, had not she came back I'd have been laying there for I don't know how long you know I was unconscious and she came back and got me and took me to the doctor so they put me in the hospital for about four days and they they wanted to give me a blood transfusion so they were talking to me and I told the little lady I said I don't want any she said you have any religious feeling about getting a blood transfusion I said no I said if you're going to save my life you know, give it to him, but make sure you give me some of the blood of Jesus. And so she kind of laughed on that, and she said, well, I'll hold off for a few minutes to see if you'll count. They put me on IV, and my blood count began to go up a little bit. <laughs> when it started going up, they said, we're going we gonna to monitor you and hold you. But I said, just hold on that blood over there. But what she didn't understand, I already was getting the blood transfusion. I was getting the blood of Jesus. And, and every, every, like every 10 minutes, they're coming and they're taking blood from me. So I just stop and ask the question. I say, how in the world that I'm going to get my blood up and you sucking it out every five minutes? She couldn't answer that. But the more they take out of it, the more blood they were taking out of me, the more my blood began to go up. See, I know God is a healer. I don't care what you say or how you look at it. I know he's a healer. Because it, over my, just my life, what that song, somebody you were saying, you don't know what he done for me. I don't know how I go. I don't have the right key. I, I just use skeleton key. Skeleton key fit everything. Like the sack dress. They can, anybody remember the, how many remember the sack dress? The sack dress, well, anybody can wear a sack dress. Because just hang on your shoulder. If you hang on your shoulder. It fit. Well, that's the way I feel. I get in any key. And the one thing I know, I don't know they know, I know that God is a healer. That's what I know. God is a deliverer. So whatever it is, you don't have to tell nobody. The thing that you're dealing with, this day, this day, I want you to know that God is a healer. Would you believe that for me? Would you believe that for me? Amen. God can change your direction. And God, and what's that you were talking about? Satisfy your theme. But what satisfy? With good thing. I like spaghetti. I can eat spaghetti any time of night. Two o'clock in the morning. Give me some spaghetti. I eat them. They satisfy anything. What you want? I can't figure out what you want. Give me some spaghetti. That's right, Mother Clark. I like spaghetti. Amen. 
God will satisfy every need that you need. I promise you that. Amen. Would y'all do that? So get your prayer. After prayer, I have some all here. I want to be able to give everybody one of these. Amen. Uh, there's some testimony we have that we're giving out to all during the convocation. And people have called and said God have worked and healed. And they've been healed. Amen. It's not the all, but it's the faith that you believe. Amen. We give God praise for all of you. Amen. Would you do that? Amen. Call that single song. We're going to do this prayer. I want these brothers, somebody bring Samuel, bring him up in the front here. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Oh, yes. Just what I wanted. Got just what I wanted. 
got just what I wanted from the Lord. Oh, I got just what I wanted. Got just what I wanted. Just what I wanted. Got just what I wanted. Got just what I wanted from the Lord. I got just what I wanted. Got just what I wanted. Got just what I wanted from the Lord. Oh, holy ghost, what I wanted. Holy ghost, what I wanted. Holy ghost, what I wanted from the Lord. Raise your hand. Just raise your hand where you're at. And my grandson is going to pass out the all to you, okay? That you don't want the all. But raise your hands. Oh, joy is what I wanted. Joy is what I wanted. Keep your hands raised. Joy is what I wanted from the Lord. Joy is what I wanted. Joy is what I wanted. Joy is what I wanted from the Lord. Well, what I wanted. Peace is what I wanted from the Lord. Peace is what I Praise the Lord, and we thank him and honor him, and we thank the Lord. The Lord, he just, um, I was just saying today, before I came, and Brother um, Sammy came to mind, and I said, Lord, we need to anoint him again. His time is coming. His turn is coming up. Amen. And so I believe it's going to really bless him when he see Mother Billy come in here walking straight. God did that. And it's for you as well. And if we just believe God, he wants to do it. And so not Bishop didn't even know that I had that in my spirit. But the Lord, he was saying for you and even as Bishop said, it wasn't an accident for our other two brothers. Well, at this time, we want to share in our giving. I'm asking, I know it's close to the end of the month, but we want to, I'm asking you to share in $25. Amen. Every one of you, if you would share, ladies, uh, with um, $25. And so, Bishop talks to us about being good leaders. I'm going to lead with $50. That's what the Lord gave me. So I'm doing that now through the Givelify. And those that are still viewing, we ask that you will also share with us today um, a gift, a special gift of offering. And we know that the Lord will bless you real good. We thank the Lord, Bishop, sharing with us today. And at this time, we ask that you would come and bring your offering at this time. Blessings to you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And 
and also those of you that are giving your tithes today. Yes. everyone we just praise God father we thank you and praise you for every giver everyone that shared today you said you love a cheerful giver and we thank you Lord for the joy in giving and we believe by faith you're such a creative God you have all type of ways of blessing your people and for all of this we give thanks in Jesus name amen well, as they're uh, moving the table here, we want to give a shout out to those that had viewed us. And somebody really stayed the whole time. It was your first time viewing us and you stayed. I believe God had that blessing for you. And will you join us again on the next time? Let's say God bless to those viewing as we're leaving us. God bless you.